Recently, my friend got a new dog and he's having a hard time remembering whether or not he's fed the dog throughout the day. And because he's a maker, he decided he wanted to design and build a device that would help remind him whether or not he's fed his dog. The thing I like about this project is that it doesn't have to be specific to feeding your dog. This little device could help you remember to do anything three times a day, whether that's watering your plants or getting up to stretch or take a walk three times a day, or maybe you have a medication or something that you need to take three times a day. This could be customized to kind of fit any need. He got started on this project and had a really solid foundation, but he asked for my help, and so I'm gonna step in and help him build this project. Here are the design requirements. He wanted to use these little push buttons that have an RGB illuminated LED on them. He wants to have one button for breakfast, one button for lunch, and one button for dinner. These three buttons will remind him to feed his dog at three times during the day, 7 a.m., 1 p.m., and 6 p.m. At seven in the morning when it's time to feed his dog, the first light will turn blue. If he hasn't fed the dog by 7.15, the light will turn red. As soon as he feeds the dog, he can push the button and it will turn green, and that will tell him and his whole family that the dog has been fed. The same scenario will happen at 1 p.m. and at 6 p.m. When it's time to feed, the light will turn blue. As soon as you feed the dog, you push the button and it turns green. If you haven't fed the dog yet and it's been more than 15 minutes, the light will turn red. Additionally, this needs to have his wife's approval, so I can't have this thing strung out on a breadboard. I need to design a minimal and nice looking case for this that everything will fit into and it will sit on their kitchen counter and not look too distracting. My friend also had the requirement that this must be internet connected, so I'm going to use a Wi-Fi enabled microcontroller and connect it to the Telegram messaging app. So anytime the light turns red, meaning that it's been too long and the dog has not been fed, it will send him a telegram message. As I'm thinking about this design off the top of my head, I'm kind of worried about how much wiring there's gonna be. So what I think I'm gonna do is actually design a circuit board that everything will connect to, and that will take care of the rat's nest of wires that I want to avoid. So I'm gonna start by drawing this circuit on a computer and designing the PCB. So the first thing I need to do is add the microcontroller. I think I'm gonna use the ESP32 feather board from Adafruit. So I'm gonna find the symbol for that and I'm gonna add it to the schematic. From there, I need to create a symbol for that RGB LED push button. I don't have it in there, so I'm gonna have to make it from scratch. I'm gonna take an existing push button that has an LED in it and just modify that symbol to have an R, a G, and a B LED in there. These RGB LEDs are common cathodes, so I can tie each of those to ground, as well as one of the pins on the push button. I'm gonna add a current limiting resistor to each of the LEDs, and then I'm gonna give them a net name that I can tie to the microcontroller. On the microcontroller side, I just need to assign each of these net names a GPIO pin so that I can control them individually. And finally, I asked my friend if he wanted this to make any sounds, and he said, absolutely not, he doesn't want it to be annoying, but I think I'm gonna sneak a little buzzer in here just in case at some point he decides he wants to add a little bit of sound to this project. This is the nice thing about designing a PCB is that it doesn't cost extra to add footprints. When I go to build this board, I don't have to place that buzzer component on there. I can just leave the footprint blank. And honestly, that's pretty much it for the schematic. I can assign footprints to all of these symbols and then design the board layout. I kind of started out by laying all three buttons in a horizontal configuration, and I quickly decided that I didn't really like that design and that a vertical orientation would look a lot better. So first I'm gonna place the footprints for my buttons in a vertical layout, and then I'll add the current limiting resistors to each of those RGB LEDs. And then finally, I'll connect the microcontroller pins to their proper inputs and outputs. Before I can design the board outline, I kind of need to know what my mechanical enclosure is going to look like. So I'm gonna open up Fusion 360 and start modeling the enclosure. I'll start by creating a simple box. I'm gonna use the fillet tool to give it some rounded edges. And then I know that we want the enclosure to sit at an angle. So I'm gonna use the chamfer tool to create a 45 degree angle on the bottom. Once I have those features, I can use the shell tool to hollow out the box so that I can fit stuff inside of it. We discussed different ways of how to make sure this little device doesn't slide around. So we came up with an idea of just using like a heavy metal plate as the base. So I'm gonna order that from Send Cut Send and hopefully the weight of that will be enough to kind of keep this thing from sliding around on the counter. The enclosure with all of the electronics will be 3D printed while the base plate and then the face plate will be cut out of metal. I need to add some holes so that I can screw these pieces together. Now comes time for the face plate. I'm gonna use the same spacing that I used on the circuit board design to create three holes 
for the face plate. And that's where the buttons will be inserted into. I have fiddled with this for a couple of hours, adding some minor details here and there and adjusting a few things. And I'm pretty happy with how it looks. At this point, I'm ready to order my PCB and I can upload my design and order the laser cut parts from Send Cut Send. I can also order the electronic components from DigiKey. For the 3D printed parts, I'm going to use my Bamboo Labs printer. Having sponsors helps me make cool projects like this, so if you haven't already, go check them out. The 3D printed parts are done on the bamboo printer, and I used a PETG carbon fiber filament, and this thing turned out perfect. I mean, look how flawless that looks. And while I'm waiting for the circuit board and the laser cut parts to arrive, I just 3D printed some mock-up pieces just out of plastic, and I'm gonna use those to assemble this and do a dry run. The big downside to this design is the fact that these little buttons have to be soldered to a PCB, but before they can do that, they have to be slid through the faceplate. And so once you've slid these buttons through the faceplate and soldered them onto the PCB, this sort of becomes a permanent sub-assembly. There's no way to remove them from the faceplate without desoldering them from the PCB. So I kind of knew that going into it, but that's sort of a trade-off that I'm willing to take. All the parts that I ordered have come in and I'm excited to start assembling this. I'm also excited to try something new. For the front face panel, I ordered some aluminum composite material. As the name suggests, it's a composite material. So the center of it is like a high density plastic and then the outer two skins are made from a thin sheet of aluminum. I ordered the black aluminum composite material because I want to laser engrave a logo as well as some labels on this face plate. To engrave this faceplate, I'm going to use the Xtool P2 CO2 laser cutter. This laser cutter has a built-in camera to help you align things, but if I wanna get the text to align perfectly with these holes, I'm gonna have to use a little bit of a trick. The first thing I'm gonna do is put a piece of cardboard into the laser cutter. Then I open up my design in the Xtool software, and I make sure I add an outline just a little bit bigger than the outline of the faceplate. I can put that outline on a separate layer and cut it out of the cardboard just on its own. Then I can place the faceplate inside that cutout and all of the other engraving that takes place on the other layers will line up perfectly. I didn't mention this earlier, but my friend with the dog came up with the name Chow Check for this product. And he even designed a little logo that I'm laser engraving on the faceplate. This turned out way better than I expected. I'm definitely gonna be using this process in the future. Like I said earlier, I have to install the buttons through the faceplate and then solder them to the PCB, and this becomes sort of a permanent sub-assembly. So I kind of had to do this step now before it was too late. If I had assembled everything first and then tried to engrave it, it wouldn't have worked. This is one of those things that I'm spending a little extra time on to make sure I get correct, because if I do this wrong, this part is basically scrapped and I have to start over again. Do you remember earlier when I talked about one of the requirements being that this thing doesn't slide around too much? And my solution to that was to build a really heavy base plate. This is made out of quarter inch steel plate. I'm interested in seeing how much more the base plate weighs than the enclosure as well as the electronics. So I'm gonna put these on the scale and it looks like they weigh about 86 grams. And if I put the base plate on there, we can see that it weighs 164, so that's roughly twice as much. So when I attach the base plate to the bottom of the enclosure, that weight should be more than enough to keep it from really sliding around too much. With all of these components soldered to the board, I'm ready to program this project. I have the Arduino IDE open, and I'm gonna start by defining which GPIO pins I'm going to need. Each button has a switch, as well as a red, green, and blue LED pin. I can always refer back to the schematic to remember which pins I assigned to each. Next, I'll use the pin mode function to set the switches as inputs and the LED pins as outputs. Then in the main loop, I pretty much have two tasks. I wanna structure this in a way where I assign the colors to each of the buttons, and then I'll use a custom function to actually set the colors on the buttons. I'm making sure not to use any delay lays in the main function because I want to continuously assign and set these LEDs. I need to write some conditions to set the color either to red or to blue. So I'll write an if statement and I'll check to see if the current time is greater than the task time plus my 15 minute grace period. And if that condition is met, then I'll assign the color red. Otherwise, I'll check to see if the current time is later than the task time, and if so, I'll set the color as blue. It's always good to have a default condition. So if no other conditions are met, I'm going to assign the color black, which just means that the LEDs will be turned off. 
Of course, I'm gonna be doing this for all three buttons. When the current time reaches midnight, I wanna reset everything and turn the LEDs off. To read the button presses, I'm going to use an interrupt service routine. As I do with all electromechanical switches, I take care of bouncing within that interrupt service routine by checking to see if it's been long enough for the bouncing to have stopped. If so, I set the color to green. The nice thing about using a Wi-Fi microcontroller is that I can get the current time using an NTP server, and I want to make sure that I'm updating that as often as I can in the main loop. A lot of this is pseudo code, and it's not fully fleshed out, but this is the general idea of how this code works. Right now, all three buttons are turned off. In a few moments, this light will turn blue because it will be time to feed Luna breakfast. Now, if my friend Jonathan is passing by and he happens to see that the light has turned blue, he can go feed the dog and push the button, and the button will turn green, indicating that the dog has been fed. Let's say one of his kids comes by and pushes the button without actually feeding the dog. Each button can be reset to their previous state by holding it down for three seconds. But what happens if Jonathan doesn't walk past this and see that it's time to feed the dog? After 15 minutes, the light will turn red. Just like before, if you feed the dog, you press the button and it turns green. And also, just like before, if the button was pressed by mistake, it can be reset by holding it down for three seconds. Each button can be pressed down for three seconds to revert it back to its previous state. Not only will the light turn red, but Jonathan will get a telegram message sent to him reminding him to feed Luna lunch. But the telegram interface doesn't stop there. If I want to change any of the settings for the buttons, all I have to do is type in settings and it will prompt a little menu for me. Then I can choose which of the three tasks I wanna edit. So for example, let's say I wanna edit the lunchtime. Instead of feeding Luna at one o'clock, let's say I wanna feed her at 1.30. All I have to do is reply to this message and type in 1.30. And you'll notice that it replies back saying that the time has been changed. And remember earlier how I held down the button to reset it back to its previous state? I can do the same thing right here in the app. I can say reset feed Luna lunch and the LED will change from green back to its previous state. What I like about this project is that it doesn't have to be used to remind you to feed a dog. It can be used to remind you to do other tasks. I'm still working on the code, but the next feature I wanna add is being able to edit the task label. So instead of saying feed Luna, it will say go outside and take a walk. If you're interested in building a task reminder like this, all of the source files will be available on my GitHub. If you have an idea of what you would use this for, I would love to hear about it down in the comments. My name is Zach and I look forward to seeing you next time.